present Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> My British Buddy, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests, Bill Pertwee, Larry Martin, Jack Watson, Pearl Hackner, Molly Sugden and Wendy Richards. <laughs> Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. The creeping paralysis of war continues to spread throughout Europe as one country follows another in their refusal to give in to Hitler and his tyrannical bid for supreme power. In Britain, in the church hall at Warmington-on-Sea, Captain Mannering is addressing his men. Since we've been together, men, we have had to face some dark times. Very dark indeed. In fact, there was a time last winter when things were so dark it was difficult to see ahead. You mean when we had the power cuts? <laughs> That'll do, Walter. At last, though, I'm happy to say, after all the darkness, we can now see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's a long tunnel, very small light. But nonetheless, shining brightly for all to see. Mr. Rogers won't like that. <laughs> I'm not referring to the blackout, you stupid boy. <laughs> I'm talking about the war situation. The fact is that after our standing alone against the Nazi hordes for two years, help is now at hand. Oh, is it, son? Anybody will know? <laughs> I think you should. It's the Americans. Oh, oh, good old Uncle Sam. <laughs> hey, is your uncle American, Joe? You never know. He might be one of the ones coming over. <laughs> no, Parky, you don't understand. Uncle Sam's not really an uncle. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's like me calling Sergeant Wilson Uncle Arthur. <laughs> See, we're not really related. It's just that he spends a lot of time at my mum's. Stop talking in the ranks. me. Now, as you know, the Americans came into the war a few months ago. And the first consignment is now arriving from the USA. Mm -hmm. They haven't exactly rushed, have they? <laughs> War's been on for two and a half years. No, but any of that sort of talk, Fraser. When can we expect the American gentleman, sir? A small advance guard will be arriving in Warmington on Saturday morning. And I think that we should give them a hearty welcome. You mean sort of uh, roll out the red carpet for them, sir? Precisely. Haven't actually got a red carpet, of course. So I could lay my hands on some carpet that's just been taken out of the cottage hospital's casualty department. That's red. Not all over, but in patches. You know. <laughs> Don't be disgusting, Walter. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I think we ought to take our American cousins to our bosoms and nurture them and take them into our homes. Exactly, Jones. I don't think my mum would like to have a lot of strange Americans in the house. In time of war, Pike, one cannot afford to choose one's bedfellows. <laughs> I've got a double bed, sir, and uh, I wouldn't mind a sherry if one of them was hard put. <laughs> very kind of you, Godfrey, but uh, I didn't mean bedfellows in the literal sense. <laughs> well, what we ought to do, sir, is to show the Americans something typically British. Good idea, Wilson. Uh, what about a, a display of Highland dancing, sir? You couldn't get more British than that, could you? Yes. How about it, Fraser? Could you arrange a display? You're the president of the Warmington-on-Sea Caledonian Society. Ah. <laughs> to be a, a wee bit difficult, sir. Why? I'm the only one in it. <laughs> there used to be two of us, Jock McLean and me, but when I put the subscriptions up to five shillings a year, <laughs> he wouldn't have paid, so I threw him out. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Yes, Jones. I wish to report that I've just been struck by a thought. <laughs> what is it? Well, sir, when I was in the Sudan and we signed a peace treaty with the whirling dervishes, General Kitchener thought it'd be a good idea to have a get-together. So he asked the dervishes what they'd like to do. And they said they wanted a spear-throwing contest. But he forbade it. Really? Why was that? They wanted to use General Kitchen as the target. <laughs> anyway, the point of my story is, why don't we invite the Americans to watch a darts match at the Red Lion? Excellent idea, Jones. Yeah. An evening at a typically English pub. What could be better? We'll invite them all to a spear-throw to, to a darts match <laughs> at the Red Lion on Saturday night. <laughs> now, we want it to be informal, of course, so you can bring your ladies with you. I'll bring Shirley, sir. You remember her, don't you, Mr. Marion? Works in the fish and chip shop. Oh, yes. yes. 
Not an easy girl to forget. <laughs> and Uncle Arthur, I mean, Sergeant Wilson will bring my mum, won't you? What? Oh, yes, I suppose so. Yes, yes. <laughs> what about you, sir? Would you, uh, would you bring Mrs. Mannering? Oh, no. I... <laughs> no, somehow I don't think Elizabeth would uh, do very much for Anglo-American relations. <laughs> Now, what else can we think of? Hey, what about a banner stretched across the bar, sir, with a message of greeting on it? Yes, yes, that's an idea. Yeah, I can get one made up for you, sir. Very well, Walker. Yeah, tell me what you want, and I'll take it down. Go on. Ah, now, let's, uh, let's see. How about, um... Hello to our brave American allies. Go to it, and you'll soon be home. Blimey, you can't have it that long. So we'll go twice around the bar and out across the high street. <laughs> I'll cut it down. Now, uh, well, I mean, for a start, you don't want all that brave American ally stuff, do you? <laughs> they don't have to tell the Americans uh, they're brave. They know already. <clears throat> we'll just call them Yanks. You don't need to tell them where to go. From what I hear about it, they'll soon find out. <laughs> right, I'll cross that bit out then. And uh, there's no need for the soon be owned bit. Uh, they've only just come into the war. What have you got left, Mr Walker? Um, let's see. Yanks, go home. <laughs> Look, Walker, just make it a short greeting and don't spend more than ten shillings. Well, sir, just leave it to me. There you are, Mr. Mannery. As ordered, one banner in position. A little brief, isn't it, Walker? Well, you said you didn't want to spend more than ten bob. Yes, but even for that, I expected rather more than high body. <laughs> well, at least it's snappy. I mean, the Yanks will like that. So snappy, they may not even notice it. <laughs> oh, and by the way, sir, just before you arrived, the Southern Daily Echo rang about the reporter you asked them to send them along this evening. Ah, yes, 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 sir. I thought uh, they could do a feature, you know. Warmington on Sea Home Guard meets American troops. Or rather, American troops meet Warmington on Sea Home Guard. Yes, that's much better. Anyway, oh, what time is this reporter coming? He's not, sir. <laughs> He's not coming? I don't understand. Well, the editor said he was sorry, but they've only got one reporter at the moment. So they had a toss-up between us and the Waterboards production of The Gondoliers. <laughs> and we lost. Gondoliers? How dare they? Don't they realise that we're making history here tonight? This is real life, not play-acting. This is very disappointing news. Well, I'm very sorry, sir, but there it is. Hello, boys. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Fox. Oh, good evening, Mr. Jones. I must say, you look very nice tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. <laughs> to look my best. Americans are used to all these Hollywood blondes, so we've got to look to our laurels. You like my scent? No, it's lovely. It's Californian poppy. <laughs> I thought it would be appropriate, don't you? Well, I... After all, I said to myself, it's up to us girls to do all we can to make those Americans feel at home. I'm sure you agree, Mr. Jones. Oh, yes, I suppose I do. <laughs> Hey, Jonesy, I'm just going to pop out and ring Shirley. She should have been here by now. Yes, OK, Joe. Oh, look, Mrs Fox, here comes Mr Wilson and Mrs Pike. Oh, yes. <laughs> Evening, Mr Wilson and Mrs Pike. Evening, Mr Jones. Really, Arthur? Hmm? Why didn't you say good evening to Mr. Jones? You've been a real misery tonight. For heaven's sake, try and cheer up. I'm perfectly cheerful, Mavis. Oh, no, you're not. You don't take me out very often. You might at least make an effort. No, it's not that, Mavis. It's just that I, I never seem to be able to get away from Mr. Mannering and the others. Does that mean you want to get away from me, Uncle Arthur? No, no, no. <laughs> of course not, Frank. But I'm with Mr. Mannering all day at the bank and on parade with him every evening. And then on our one night off, he drags us all along here to meet those Americans. I'd much rather be in some cosy cocktail bar with perhaps a little Noel Card playing on the piano. <laughs> I saw Noel Card in that film, you know, in, in which we serve. He's not little, he's quite normal size. <laughs> <laughs> really, Frank. Hello, everybody. Hey, look, there's Joe's girlfriend, Shirley. You know, the one with the tight blouse and all the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I'm sure the Americans will love her. Hello, the Captain. I'm Shirley. Remember me? Oh, yes. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Good evening, Shirley. Have you seen Joe? Well, I believe he's gone to phone you. Yeah, I suppose I'm a bit late, really. I was putting my face on. I beg your pardon? <laughs> my makeup. I was trying for the demure look. After all, when no shanks arrive, we don't want them to get the wrong idea about us English girls, do we? <laughs> 
I should think there'd be very little chance of that. <laughs> well, I suppose I'll have to wait for Joe. At least he'll offer to buy me a drink. Cheek. <laughs> Wilson, come over here a minute, will you? Uh, coming, sir. <clears throat> what is it? <clears throat> well, I've been thinking about when these Americans actually get here tonight. Hey, the train on up, huh? Oh, Lord, it's that dreadful fellow Hodges. Mm. Hello, Napoleon. Good <laughs> evening, Hodges. Well, I must say, me and my lads are looking forward to the darts match tonight. Always ready to give you a lot of thrashing. <laughs> what time do we kick off? Nine o'clock. Why do we have to wait till then? Because we're putting this dance match on for the benefit of the Americans. So there wouldn't be much point in starting before they arrive. Oh, blimey, I hate blooming yanks. Loud-mouthed, overbearing lot. I can't stand them. <laughs> right, let's have some service here. <laughs> he really is terribly uncouth, isn't he? Well, <laughs> what do you expect? Man's a greengrocer. <laughs> What were you saying before Hodges interrupted? Oh, yes. <coughs> now, look. When the Americans arrive, I want you to get everybody lined up. Then I'll say a few appropriate words. You mean you'll, uh, you'll make a sort of speech? Yes, that's right. You do realize that the pub closes at 10.30, don't you? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, you won't make it too long or too formal, will you? Of course I won't. I should give you very informal. Apparently there's some sort of colonel in charge of them. The question is, how, how do you think I should greet him? Well, he'll probably say, Hardy, partner, put it there. <laughs> you say what? Hardy, partner, put it there. Put what? Where? <laughs> Your hand in his. Oh, you mean shake hands? Yes, 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 that's right. Oh, don't be absurd, Wilson. <laughs> Colonel in the American Army wouldn't say, Howdy, partner, put it there. <laughs> You and Pike see far too many American children. There he is, Mr. Mannering. Right, thank you, Walker. Jones, get the men lined up. Yes, very good, sir. Right, sir. Do it informally. Oh, very good, sir. Come along now, line up informally at the double. <laughs> come along, come along. Come along. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Jones. Whereabouts in the lane do you want us to step? No, no, Mrs. Fox. When I said line up, I wasn't referring to you ladies. Well, we don't want to be left out. No, I've done a bit of fighting in my time and all. Even if it was only for me virtue. <laughs> Will you please sit down, ladies? Oh, come on, Mavis. It looks as though we've got all dolled up for nothing. Oh. They'll never be able to smell my Californian poppy from over there. <laughs> Californian poppy? Excuse me, sir. Here they come. That must be the Colonel at the end of the group. You'd better do your best. Right. Leave this to me, Wilson. <laughs> Good evening, Colonel. On behalf of the people of Warmington... Howdy, partner. Put it there. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, indeed. Put it there. <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> well, now, Colonel, on behalf of Warmington on Sea, may I bid you welcome and congratulate you upon entering the war. Well, on behalf of my man and myself, Captain, thanks a lot. Now, I suppose we'd better introduce ourselves. My name's uh, Schultz, Colonel Herman A. Schultz. My name's Mannering, Captain George J. Mannering. <laughs> May I introduce my sergeant? Wilson. Arthur K. Wilson. <laughs> How awfully nice to meet you. Excuse me, Mr. Mannering. I was wondering if you require me for a few moments, because I think I'd rather excuse you. Yeah, they're all, they're all right, Doctor. <laughs> Thank you, Off sir. you go. Sorry about that, Colonel. Unfortunately, one of my men has a little weakness. <laughs> oh, you mean a lack of moral fiber? No, no, it's a little lower down than that. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I see, uh, yeah. Uh, well, what's his name, then? Godfrey Charles P. <laughs> Well, now, Colonel, while you and your men are in Warmington, you're our guests. And as such, we want you to make ourselves at home. Well, that's mighty nice of you. Okay, boys, you heard what Captain Mannery said. Relax, make yourselves at home. <laughs> yeah, well, now, I'd sure like to meet some of the good folks that you have here tonight. Yes, yes, of course. Now, this is cool. Uh, why don't we start with this uh, lady? Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Well, go on, Arthur. Aren't you going to introduce me to the Colonel? What? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, Mavis, uh, this is Colonel Schultz. 
Colonel Schultz, Mrs. Pike. Ah, uh, howdy, ma'am. Uh, so you're married, eh? Ah, <laughs> lucky fellow. Oh, well, uh, actually, I'm a widow. <laughs> Say, what do you know? A merry widow, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm still in there with a chance, then. <laughs> I'm Shirley. Not now, Shirley, not now. <laughs> Is this your good lady, Captain Mannery? <laughs> I beg your pardon? This young lady, Shirley, your wife, is she? No, she is not. Huh? He should be so lucky. <laughs> Some girl, that, eh? Yes. <clears throat> now, Colonel. Perhaps you'd like to meet some of my men. Oh, uh, well, uh, to be honest, Captain, I'd rather carry on meeting the ladies, but, uh, well, still, if uh, you say so, okay. Uh, this is Lance Corporal Jones. Uh, howdy, Corporal. I'm pleased to meet you, sir. Of course, I had the honor of serving with the Americans in France in 1917. Oh, really? Yes. They used to call us limies. You don't say? Yes, I do. I just said it. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jones. Jones. <laughs> now, who's next? Ah, yes. Private Fraser. Howdy, Fraser. Now, what do you have to say for yourself? Knows the deer, knows the hour. See the front of battle lower. See approach proud headless power. Chains and slavery. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I... No, 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 no. I'm not finished. <laughs> War will be a traitor knave. War can fill a coward's grave. War's a beast is be a slave. Let him turn and flee. <laughs> You know, uh, uh, Captain Mannering, I, I didn't realize that you were running an international unit here. <laughs> How do you mean international? Well, I have no idea what that lingo was, but it sure sounded great. Now, what part of the world does this old timer come from? Yeah, I come from Scotland. And that was in a foreign language. That was a war ballad by Robbie Burns, brought up to date by me. <laughs> Well, was it indeed? God damn it, what do you know? What indeed? And this is Private Godfrey. You saw him earlier, en route. <laughs> Greetings, sir. I'm afraid my sister says he couldn't come tonight. Touch of rheumatics. She sent you some of her upside down cakes. Uh, they're in this tin. Uh, upside? Uh, oh, well, gee, yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, I say, Mannering, you've certainly got some veterans in your outfit. I, I didn't know that the British Army took them so old. Well, of course, you see, uh, we're not real soldiers. We're, we're home guards. Uh, oh, what are home guards? Well, sort of part-time soldiers, you see. Captain Mannering's a bank manager. I'm his chief clerk. And the others are mainly shopkeepers. Now, look, Wilson, I don't think... You see, Colonel, uh, the home guard was formed... To protect the town against German parachute troops and, uh, and things. Well, you don't have to worry anymore. In future, we'll do all the defending there is to do around here. Now, you old-timers can just relax now and take it easy. <laughs> oh, uh, how kind. <laughs> now, look here, Colonel. Look, why don't I we think... go over to the bar and have a drink? Now, that sounds a great idea. Now, how about it, Captain? Yes, uh, yes, of course. Hey, Joe, Joe, we've got to do something quick. What about? The Americans, they're chatting up our girls. Yeah, look at them. It's not fair. Hey, you may not believe this, Shirley, but I used to be a cowboy before I joined the army. Oh, did you really? Here, Joe, Wayne here used to be a cowboy. Isn't that interesting? Oh, yeah, very. <laughs> Shooting and that one for good conduct. Here, Wayne, <laughs> not too good, I hope. <laughs> oh, I like these Americans, don't you, Charlotte? Not half. <laughs> They're such nice boys and so generous. I'm ashamed of you, Mrs. Fox, sitting there on that young fellow's lap. You're old enough to be his mother. If it comes to that, Mr. Jones, you're old enough to be my father. <laughs> See what I mean, Joe? She's become inflamed. <laughs> uh, look, uh, Mavis, now, what's going on? Oh, hello, Arthur. The sergeant here is being ever so nice. He says, I'm the perfect English rose. You sure are, sister. <laughs> now, look here, you, you haven't even been introduced to this lady. Listen, buddy, why don't you take a walk? Well, for one thing, I don't feel like a walk, and secondly, this lady is with me. Oh, Arthur, 
I do believe you're jealous. Oh, no, 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 Mr. Embassy. Of course I'm not. It's just that... Uh, no, I wouldn't uh, bother if I were you, Mr. Wilson. These Yanks have really turned their heads. If you ask me, the war's taken a very nasty turn. Sir! Oh, really? I'm coming, sir, coming. Oh, there you are. There's your beer. You only wanted half, didn't you? <laughs> well, I... I... Jolly good. <coughs> oh, we have. Hello, Cole. My name's Hodges. <laughs> you know, I met your lot when they came out to France in 1917 under General Perishing. You mean General Pershing? Oh, well, I knew it was some Perishing general. <laughs> By the way, you'll notice I said in 1917, although the war, as we all know, started in 1914. <laughs> this war's only been going for two and a half years, so if you come in now, at least that's an improvement on the last time. What was that you said, Buster? I said you're improving. This time you've only waited two and a half years for a bit of action instead of three. That's what I thought you said. Well, see how you like this for a bit of action. Cheers, Colonel. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Captain Mannery. Oh, I'm just, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you were already here. Come in, Wilson. Thank you, sir. By the way, <laughs> how's the eye? <laughs> Swelling's gone down a bit, but still very painful. Yes, it really was most unfortunate that you leant for it. Just at the moment, Colonel Schultz lashed out at Hodges. It's here, you see, it's on the front page, today's Southern Daily Echo. Yes, yes, I know. Good. <laughs> what? Just a GHQ on the phone. Oh. They've seen that paper as well. Unfortunately, they also appear to have heard about all the fighting that broke out afterwards. Oh, dear. I assume they're not very happy. That, Wilson's putting it mildly. Because they're worried that if the Nationals get hold of it, they'll have a field day. You can almost see the headlines now, can't you? British and American troops fight it out in South Coast pub. <laughs> oh, what now? Come in. Hey, excuse me, sir. What is it, Jones? Well, sir, me and the platoon have come to see you about the sort of deputation we've made to say how sorry we are about last night and to assure you that it was not our fault. Well, I realise that, Jones. Well, unfortunately, GHQ feels that... It would be best if I made a public apology to Colonel Schultz in order to preserve Anglo-American relations. Oh, you, you mean you're going to be made the scapegoat, sir? <laughs> yes, I'm afraid so. Mind you, if I'm going to take the blame in public, I'm going to make damn sure that GHQ realises that we weren't actually responsible. In fact, I'm going to send them a full report. So I want you all to tell me in your own words what happened. <clears throat> Let's start with you, Wilson. Off you go. Right, uh, well, uh, uh, when the fight started, I... I thought I'd get out of the way, so I, uh, I died under a table. <laughs> that was after he thumped the American sergeant. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry to say, I only tapped him a couple of times. He's being far too familiar with Mrs. Pike. Yeah, Mum was furious. When Uncle Arthur got home, she wouldn't let him in. <laughs> he had to spend the night in the tool shed. <laughs> really, please, Frank, heaven's sake. <clears throat> what about you, Jones? That's a nasty bump you've got on your forehead. Which American did that? None of them, sir. It was Mrs. Fox. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, she didn't like my attitude to the Yanks she was talking to. Why, what were you doing? Banging his head on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Your oh, turn, oh. Fraser. Oh, well, sir, I just gave one of them a wee push. <laughs> you already understand? Just a wee push. <laughs> she... He'd not, not glass of whiskey to my hand, and no true Scot will tolerate that. <laughs> it was just unfortunate that he collided with a bottle that Joe Walker here was holding. <laughs> All right. What were you doing with the bottle, Walker? Uh, well, it was like this, sir. When the fight started, I thought I'd better try and calm things down and get a sing-song going. Well, it just so happened that while I was conducting, I had a bottle in each hand. <laughs> I never heard anything like this in my life. What about you, Pike? I don't suppose you did anything violent? Yes, sir. <laughs> I have to confess, I lost my temper. <laughs> what did you do? Well, I took my courage in both hands. I went up to one of the Yanks, and I went... <laughs> <laughs> and then he chased me round the bar. That is, and, until Mr. Godfrey hit him over the head with a chair. <laughs> 
Really, he trod on my, my sister's upside down cake, sir. <laughs> I see. Well, I think of the circumstances, I'd better let sleeping dogs lie. And apologize to Colonel Schultz, as GHQ wishes. Well, we were provoked, you know, sir. Yes, I know that, Wilson. I must admit that I didn't like that Colonel's attitude from the start. No. Yeah. Telling battle-scarred veterans like us to take it easy and let them do all the defending. Them? Bunch of American greenhorns? Actually, sir, it's tin horns. <laughs> I don't care if it's cream horns. <laughs> there are nothing whatsoever about war. Good evening, Captain Mannering. Oh, good evening, Colonel Schutzhorn. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to crash in on you like this, Captain. I just want to apologize for last night. Oh, really? Well, I... Uh... No, no, no. You know, I never realized what you guys have been through. What with all that goddamn bombing and the food shortages and the like? Anyway, I want to make it up to you, and I brought you some scotch. There you are. Two bottles of the best. That's very generous of you, Colonel. Isn't it, Wilson? Oh, yes, sir. Awfully generous. Ah, oh, forget it, Captain. It's my pleasure. Now, my men would be here to apologize in person, but we're having a ladies' night in the mess, and they're busy fixing the place up. Did you hear that, Frank? A ladies' night in the mess. What about it, Uncle Arthur? Well, when we went home for tea... Did you notice that your mother was wearing her party frock? Oh, yes, so she was. Yes. I thought it was funny, just to make toast in. <laughs> hey, look, Uncle Arthur, Joe's girlfriend, Shirley. Are you coming, Colonel? We're getting a bit cold out there in your Jeep. Be right with you, honey. Blimey, that's why she said she couldn't come out tonight. Oh, bad luck, Joe. I heard her say we're getting cold. I wonder who else is out there with her. I think I can tell you that, Mr. Jones. Uh, Mrs. Fox. Mrs. Fox. Right. That's it. Right. That American fellow's got it coming to him. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Colonel. Yeah? Is it true that in the last war, the only charge you Americans made was a 10% on the money they lent us? <laughs> I trust that I didn't hear you correctly, Corporal. Yes, Colonel. You heard me perfectly correctly. Right. In spite of your age, Corporal, you have asked for it. Hold my glasses, Willie Wilson. Take that! That's <laughs> all! Gee, I'm sorry, Captain Mannering. That wasn't meant for you. Why do you always get in the way? Here, Jock, cover for me for a minute, will you? I've got to make a couple of phone calls. And then I'll wait. No, I'm afraid, lot. I've got, a, I've got a deadline to meet. Deadline? What are you talking about, man? I've got to ring the editor of the Southern Daily Echo. Huh? <laughs> and then after that, I've got to ring my pal Charlie. Who's Charlie? Ah, oh, well, you see, he's the bloke who got me the two bottles of scotch I sold to Colonel Schultz to give to Captain Mannering. <sighs> At this rate, I reckon he's going to need a whole ruddy case. <laughs> That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lally, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavin, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden Hodges, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Jack Watson, Colonel Schultz, Pearl Hackney, Mrs. Pike, Molly Sugden, Mrs. Fox, Wendy Richard as Shirley, and Michael Middleton as the American Sergeant. My British Buddy was adapted for radio by Harold Snow and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dias. Next week, the platoon take delivery of a new weapon. But as they get to grips with it, it's the local landmarks that are in more danger than the Germans. Dad's Army, back with us again next Thursday at 7pm. Michaela Saunders on BBC Seven. And we're right in the middle of a bit of classic comedy here on Seven. There's more Seven drama and crime coming up in half an hour, right after the Weekly Constitutional with Nicholas. Welcome to Just a Minute.
told us, Parsons, and as the minute wars fades away, once more it is my pleasure not only to welcome our listeners, but also to introduce the four exciting and intrepid players of the game. We welcome back one of our regular players whose humorous contribution is beyond par, and that is Paul Merton. Sitting beside him, we have someone who's only played the game once before. He is our Irish representative here. That is that great presenter, Jerry Kelly. We have one of the great wordsmiths, one of our finest lyricists, Tim Rice, and beside him, one of the oldest and most experienced players of the game, Clement Freud, would you please welcome all four of us? (laughs) And as usual, I'm going to ask them to speak if they can on the subject that I give them, and they will try and do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviation. Beside me sits Helen Williams, who's going to keep the score, and she will blow a whistle when the full minute is up. And this particular edition of Just a Minute is coming from the Belfast Festival at Queen's, and we are at the university here at Queen's in front of a most distinguished an excited Irish audience (laughs) who are going to give forth with a little bit of clapping as well (laughs) and enjoy themselves as we try and keep going on the subjects. Uh, Clement Freud, what about you beginning the show this week? And the subject is pleasantries. Can you tell us something about pleasantries in 60 seconds starting now? A pleasantry is a verbal or physical earnest of recognition or possibly... Jerry Kelly's challenge immediately. Hesitation. Yes, there was hesitation. Well done, Jerry. Thank you. I should explain to all our listeners, particularly those abroad in India and China and all the other (laughs) countries that we go to, that every time Jerry Kelly gets anything right, there will be an incredible response from the audience, because this is his home area, so there's a lot of prejudice going. But... (laughs) Not on the part of the chairman. Um, Jerry, a correct challenge. You're right in there. 52 seconds are available. Pleasantries starting now. The most common pleasantry in Northern Ireland is, what about ye? Which is said by a variety of people, from taxi men to bin people, to other fellow travellers on this world of ours. <laughs> there was a definite stumble there. There was a definite stumble. It's the first time I've ever heard a presenter telling himself to shut up. <laughs> Tim, you've got in because we call that hesitation. 42 seconds are available. Pleasantries starting now. Pleasantries is not where the Chinese keep their game birds. No, it is a string of often insincere statements made to ease the way at um, social Um, Floyd Challenge. I thought that was hesitation. No, I don't think oh, so. Oh, really? No, no, no. <laughs> And this audience is going to let us know when, they, when there's a challenge that's correct or not. There are 32 seconds available for pleasantries. Still with you, Tim, starting now. For example, I may say things tonight that I don't really mean purely to keep things 